Hi everyone, this is Lori from Happy Birds Glitter Nest and today I'm going to show you how to make these cute little vintage Bluebird um, purse charms. These are super lightweight. They're made from the tongue depressor type popsicle sticks and I printed out the little vintage images on just plain computer paper with my inkjet printer and I'll show you how I did all of that as well. So stay tuned, I think you're really going to enjoy this tutorial. And before we move on, I'd like you to um, check out a couple of sites that I absolutely love, craft sites. The first one is Carol Tolson's um, craft site, and she goes by Refunction Crafts. I'll have her link down below in the Show More drop-down bar. And also, I'd like to share my friend Crafty's um, uh, YouTube channel. She has some beautiful things on there as well. And she shows you how to make all kinds of adorable little uh, charms. So check them out. And with that said, we'll move on and I'll show you how I put all of this together. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need these um, tongue depressor type of popsicle sticks and they carry these by the bag at Walmart and I've also seen them at Michaels I'm not sure about um, the other craft stores but I do know they carry them in those two places and what you're going to do is you're going to take a pair of strong scissors and these are from Lowe's I paid about three dollars for them and you're just going to cut the top off like that, all right. And you're going to measure about one and a half inches. So I'm going to do that right here. Let's see. Hold on for just a second. And I put a little mark here with a pencil, and I'm going to place the tongue depressor towards the back part of my scissors and then I'm going to cut now it's not super duper even at the top you can go back and try to even it up a little if you need to and we'll be doing a little bit of sanding on these two ends anyway so you're going to need um, to make as many of these as you want to make uh, the key charms out of and you can usually get about, let's see, one, two, yeah, you can usually get about four of these for, um, from each stick. So, <clears throat> what I've just been doing is, you can use the fine sandpaper if you want, but I'm just using um, a nail file, disposable nail file. And I'm not sanding these sides because, I mean, they're not bad. They don't feel rough to me. But I just do this. And it's not going to be perfect, but um, just do your best. And don't be concerned or alarmed if there's any kind of um, slight weakness in this when you bend it because once we put that triple thick on or um, or glossy accents whatever you're using it will the resin will really harden it up and um, you won't have any issues that way okay so once you have these sanded down then um, you're going to paint them and I'll show you how to do that next Okay, the first thing you're going to need is some white acrylic paint and I'm using the Folk Art Multi-Surface Acrylic Paint in Titanium White. Okay, and I'm just going to put a little bit out here on my waxed paper. Now I like to use these cosmetic sponges. You can buy them at the Dollar Tree in the cosmetics section and um, it's usually um, general stock for 
uh, Dollar Tree, so you should be able to find it. Alright, you're going to dip this in the paint and just kind of sponge it off a little bit. And just sponge it on like this. And if you do this, it turns out really nice because there's no brush marks or anything like that. And it just gives it the light coat that it needs and it'll dry fairly quickly. Now I'm going to do the edges here too, don't forget about that. Okay, so now when this part dries, I'm going to flip it over, I'm going to do the back and also the sides here and here, okay? Now, you may think that it might need a second coat, and that's okay, because honestly this dries so quickly. Um, if you live in a, a dry climate like I do, you should see it dry enough to pick up and do the other side within about... 10 minutes or so. So um, go ahead and, and finish all that up and then we'll go on to the next thing. Okay so the next thing I did was I purchased this cute little bluebird image off a shop on Etsy for $1.59 and it's called um, Frostbite F-R-O-S-T-B-Y-T-E and I'll make sure to put that link on my blog um, now I will tell you that the image that she sent me was large, I just reduced it to this size. And she does have a lot of other really cute images. Now I know a lot of you are probably thinking, well you can get vintage images on Pinterest. Yes you can, however I don't always know if, um, if they're legit or not. Um, some people share images on Pinterest and, you know, they take them from other people's websites or blogs, so I just wanted to make sure this was legit. So, um, with that said, I'll show you how I reduced this in the next part of this video. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to show you how I printed mine out. I opened up this image, and then right here in the corner, it says print. I click on that and I click on print. And when I do that, you're going to see um, this pop up if you have Windows. And on the side here, you have a choice of printing this out in different sizes. I'm going to scroll down, and the very bottom one says contact sheet 35, meaning there's there'll be 35 images on there. So I clicked on that and you can already see there's one. And I left this little check mark in the box right here that says fit picture to frame. Now they want to know how many of these images I want on here. You can um, put up to 35 like it says right here but I think I'm just going to do 5. So I clicked where it says 5. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. And 5 have appeared. And under the paper type, I put plain paper best quality. Now if you have photo paper instead, um, you could use that, but I'm just using plain computer paper, but I want it to be best quality. Okay. So now I'm going to print it out, and then um, I'll show you when it's finished printing. Okay, so all of my pieces are thoroughly dry back and front, and I let them dry overnight. I figured I might as well. And the next thing I did was, um, after I printed these out, I sprayed the front and the back with hairspray. Now your paper might look a little uh, crinkly, but that's okay because it will be flat once we put it on here. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a pair of scissors and just 
going to cut this image as straight as I can. And if you don't think you can cut a straight line, then just use your paper cutter on this. Now it doesn't have to be a hundred percent perfect, but just do your best. Okay. Now for this part, you can use glossy accents, you can use triple thick, you know, um, any type of glossy resin you would like to use. I'm using the triple thick today. And I'm just going to take my finger, you can use a brush if you want, but I'm just going to put a fairly thin layer on here. And just make sure you get those edges. That's important. Little corners. Now I'm just going to take this and do my best as far as centering it. Now if you have a little bit of that paper hanging over like this, don't worry about that because we'll take care of that afterwards. Just make sure that your image is on nice and solid. Just like this. Okay. So now we're going to have to let this dry for quite a while because one thing that we don't want is we don't want to put another layer of triple thick on top when the bottom layer hasn't dried yet. So I'm going to allow this um, to dry for most of the day. Now it depends on where you live. I live in a, a dry climate that tends to be on the warm side. If you live in a more humid climate you might have to leave this overnight. It just depends totally on where you live. So I'm going to allow this to dry absolutely thoroughly and then um, I'll come back and I'll show you how to do the rest of it. Okay, so this is completely dried. Now don't be concerned if you see like it's slightly bowed. That's just kind of the natural shape of the tongue depressors once you put anything on it. And it'll all work out in the end and I'll show you um, about that. So I'm going to be taking this triple thick and I'm just going to, with my toothpick, just kind of dip it in here. Just lay some of the triple thick on the top in spots. Like that. Maybe a little more here in the middle. And then I'll start spreading it out. Like this. And I prefer the triple thick over the glossy accents um, for this type of project simply because I don't have to fight the air bubbles because there aren't any bubbles. Some of this comes up at the top, and you want to get these corners right here. That's really important. Get those corners. Okay. Make sure there's no gaps. So, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to close my jar first because glitter has a way of flying. <laughs> And <clears throat> I'm going to just take the slightest sprinkle of this pink glitter and this was some nail glitter that a friend of mine gifted me with and I absolutely love all those glitters that you know people 
sprinkle on their nails because they're so pretty. You can buy them um, by the little bags on eBay and other online auction sites. So I just have a pinch of it in here and I'm going to be careful. I'm not going to put it on top of the birds or the roses. I'm just going to try my best to put it around the um, kind of around the edges and I'm mainly focusing not so much on the top but the sides looking pretty and if you accidentally get what you think um, is a little too much on the actual print then you can go in with your toothpick at this point and just kind of brush it away a little bit like this so you can see the face. Now you have to do it at this point, at the very beginning. You can't come back in and try this once it's been sitting for five or ten minutes or more. Otherwise it's not gonna come out. Try to just scrape the top. Like that. And if you have to go back in and put a, just a touch of the triple thick on top like that again, then you can go ahead and do that. But I'm just going to leave it alone like that. And I would highly advise not to use <clears throat> any glitter that is dark. Um, make sure it's very, very light in color. Otherwise, it will kind of swallow up your picture. Okay? So I'm going to allow this to dry overnight. And um, then I'll show you what we'll do in the morning. And this will be really pretty. I think you'll really like it. Okay, so as you can see, this is completely dried. And I will tell you that I had forgotten to trim the excess paper off around the edges. Do you remember towards the beginning of the video when we glued the image onto the popsicle? And I said after it dried I was going to turn it over and trim it up with my detail scissors. Well, I didn't do that and um, I went ahead and put the top coat of triple thick on along with the glitter and it had already dried. So I did turn it over in the back and trim it up the best I could. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that as your first choice, but in order to save this project, that's what I did. Now it is a little uneven at the top and the bottom because I had to do that, but that won't matter because we're going to be covering up the very top and the very bottom completely anyway, so you won't see it. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some triple thick and I'm going to put a very thin coat on the back just for some added protection and as soon as that dries completely I'll be back and we'll put on the finishing touches. So as you can see this is completely dried on the back so I'm going to take my Krylon uh, silver leafing pen right here I'm going to shake it up a little and squeeze some out like this and I'm just going to run this right here along the edge on both sides. <clears throat> now this is paint so you have to treat it as such and let it dry completely just like you would regular paint. I'm going to blow on it just for a little bit and I'm going to hold the place right here at the top and the bottom that I didn't put the paint on and I'm going to very gently drop it like that and I'm going to allow it to completely dry 
and then we'll be back. Okay, so we have some little ribbon ends here, and they're little clamps is what they are. And this is one inch wide, or 25 millimeter. And I'm just going to place this in my flat nose pliers. I'm going to start at the top here. I'm going to kind of center it very gently, push it down in the middle, and then come in on the sides very gently. You want to make sure that it's nice and even and it's hooked on. And as you can see, these little ribbon clamps have these little holes like this in them and you can string um, a jump ring through there or whatever you want. So I'm just very gently doing this. You'll find a lot of these ribbon ends on um, AliExpress or eBay, but I found the majority of them on AliExpress and they were cheaper. And they have different colors too. And I got the bright silver. Okay, I'm just doing the same thing on the opposite end. Squeezing a little at a time. Alright, so now we have what looks like this. So now we're going to be decorating this part here. And I'll show you what we'll do there. Okay, you can use all kinds of rhinestone chain on this. You can use a 4 millimeter if you want, like this. You can use a 3.5 millimeter. This is called two row chain, and each one of these rhinestones are 2 millimeters each. So if you put them together, they're probably equivalent to about a 4 millimeter. And so that's what I'm going to be using today. You'll also need some E6000 like that and a toothpick. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the E6000 down there and <clears throat> I think I'm going to start with the top. I'm going to roll my toothpick in this and I'm just going to spread some of the E6000 right here okay and then I'm going to place chain here and then cut it off about here you can measure it ahead of time if you want but I think it's just as easy for me to cut it off while I have it on here okay and if you want to straighten it up a little bit just take another toothpick and just do this okay and that'll hold real solid on there okay so pick up some more E6000 spread it along here put this chain on right here and I'm going to come in and cut this off okay and then straighten it up You have to be careful. You don't want to cover up that little hole right at the top and the bottom because you'll need that. Okay, so be careful. Okay, so this looks pretty good. 
I'm going to allow this to dry thoroughly and then we'll come back in and put the little clasp at the top and the um, little dangle at the bottom. I, sh <laughs> I should turn this the other way around, huh? <laughs> okay, so we'll be back. So as you can see, this has dried and it's on there nice and solid. So the next thing we're going to do is take our flat nose pliers and I'm using a seven millimeter jump ring here and these jump rings are from Michaels. I like them. They're nice and strong. They're hanging up in the bead landing section at Michaels. Okay, and then I'm just going to hook this to the top and close it. Okay, just like that. So now we're going to make the little charm that's hanging from it. I'm using a, a one inch head pin, but if you don't have head pins this small, just use a larger one and, and cut it down. Okay. I'm putting a little four millimeter daisy spacer on and a little teardrop bead, a pink one, and another four millimeter daisy spacer. Then I'm just going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to turn it to a loop, give it a little bit of a, a back bend here. Make sure it's on there nice and tight. Just like that. Okay. All right, that looks good. So now I'm going to take another seven millimeter jump ring and open it up. Where is it? Oh. Trying to see around my camera, <laughs> and then just hook it. To the bottom. Like that. There we go. And so now we have our cute little purse charm. Just like that. And then I, I made another one. And then this particular image is from another seller on Etsy and I had to uh, crop it and reduce it, this particular image here. But I think they all turned out really cute and they're super lightweight. They're a lot of fun to make and you could make these for all holidays. I'm planning on doing some, I believe, for Christmas too with some cute little Christmas images. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and um, take care and God bless. And if you haven't subscribe to this channel yet, please do so. Just click on the little subscribe button um, below this video and hit the notification bell and you'll be notified each time I upload a new video. So take care. Bye-bye.